Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So, I am currently in the process of making a bunch of imbued slates. Yep. It is time for us to look at upgrading our blood altar just ever so slightly so we can hold more LP and our, or I guess, more life essence in our blood altar. Mm hmm. So I am making a whole bunch of these imbued inscription tiles, which are turning into blank slates and then turning into uh, the reinforced slates, then to the imbued slates. Now, we want to make a bunch of these runic capacities, which do require blank runes, which we already have made. We're at the tier four altar stage, but we do need an imbued slate to upgrade them to the runic capacity. Now, if I remember correctly, once you get about 14 runes of capacity, it's better to then swap them all over to the rune of augmented capacity. Yeah, I believe the rune of capacity gives you a straight bonus per rune, like 500 LP or whatever it is. I'm not sure exactly what the number is, but the uh, rune of augmented capacity gives you like a percent increase. Yeah, I think it was around that 14 number where like these start overcoming how much that you would get from these. Anyway, so the Rune of Augmented Capacity do require the Rune of Capacity as part of the recipe, plus Demonic Slates. So I'm just going to make a full stack of um, the Imbued Slates, and we can upgrade those further to the Demonic Slate uh, after we are ready to go here. Yep, so we have a bunch of these runes already made, and these are all ready to be upgraded. And I think we're probably at least going to do this ring, if not a good portion of the next ring, all with the runic capacities here, just to make our altar that much better. So I don't have to sit here and, you know, constantly camp this thing and <laughs> use this dagger every two seconds or whatever as we are processing uh, different things through it. Yeah, I just think that makes a lot of sense. Well, anyway, guys, I'm going to spend some time here. I'm going to process this entire stack like I was talking about. I'm also doing these like one at a time because with the tick acceleration, it's just going too fast for me to keep up with. Uh, making sure the altar stays full. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to continue doing this and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So we have upgraded 20 more of our runes into the runic capacity, and our blood altar can now hold 66 buckets of life essence, which is really, really good. Now, this is what I've been doing I've been uh, doing the sacrificial dagger, and then I've been eating red hearts. Yeah, these things that we use for our charms, we have thousands of them in the system here. We can also do yellow hearts. I'm not sure if they give you more when you eat them. They might. Anyway, so you eat a red heart and it fills up your HP quite a lot. And then also because of that Batania uh, ritual thing we have, not Batania, I'm sorry, Astral Sorcery, uh, it gets rid of the weakness. Mm, can't think of the name of it. The uh, Soul Fray. Yeah, that goes away as we recover health. And it seems to go away, you can see right here, it seems to go away as we eat these hearts very frequently as I'm doing this. Um, infrequently, I keep that soul free all the way to max health. But that time I did, of course, because I'm recording and I'm telling you guys about it. Anyway, um, so eating the hearts is great, but we eat them pretty slowly. If we could recover that health like super, super fast, then I can keep this going a lot faster. So I was kind of looking for something that I know I've seen other mod packs called Quick Draw. But I think that's a cyclic mod, and cyclic is not in this particular mod pack. However, I saw there was a charm quick draw for a mystical agriculture bow. Now, the reason why we want quick draw is if you put that on a bow, and you put that bow in your offhand, that quick draw applies to like things like eating. At least it does in cyclic. I don't know if it does in mystical agriculture. So that's what I kind of want to check out. So we can make this quick draw. It's not like super expensive, but it is going to cost us a little bit to, you know, test this and see if it's going to work. But we have all the resources. It's not like that's a huge deal, but it is something interesting that I'd like to try. So let's go ahead and give it a go. Uh, so let's change this over to a crafting pattern. So we want a pattern to make that. Then we're going to need a pattern for these different apples since we have not done any apples at all. So that's the intermedium. Then we're going to want a Prudentium, and we're going to want the Inferium Apple, and finally, uh, the regular Apple Apple, right? Did I make, did I do one of these twice? I did that one twice. I thought that was a mistake. Anyway, so we have these right here. That should get us the charm that we want. 
and then we want to make ourselves a bow. Now the enchantment says it's applicable to uh, a miscraft bow, but didn't say it had to be a specific one. And I'm not sure there's any, oh, draw speed differences. So if we do a draw speed here, I wonder, Supremium Ingot, hmm, maybe it is worth doing all these. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and make the Supremium Bow. I'm pretty sure we can do all of that. Well, maybe, hold on, let's take a look. Supremium, we don't have any of those ingots and that does require us to have Elementium, which we can get through Batanus by tossing. Well, it looks like we can do it this way too. Uh, just by tossing, oh, I guess that's Terra Steel. That's not just something that we can do. Okay, so we won't be doing that one. We don't have a way to get Terra Steel. Is Terra Steel mystical agriculture? We should probably work on that at some point. Okay, so Intermedium ingots, Mana Steel. That's something we can do. So I'll make the orange bow and then we will apply the, um, yeah, the charm quick draw to it and see what we can do here. So let me go ahead and make that up real quick and we'll be right back, guys. So as it turns out, yeah, that was a big waste of time. Um, I was trying to figure out how to apply the quick draw charm to the intermedium bow. And I saw that there was a tinker team. I was like, okay, so I'll just put the bow in here and the charm in here and nothing happened. So then I was like, well, how do you do this? So I was looking at the mystical bows and I was looking at the uses for them. It looks like you can turn them into different tools or whatever. But when you get to the supremium bow, yeah, it shows that you can apply the quick draw charm to this one in the tinkering table. It doesn't say which version of the tinkering. I assume it's going to be the supremium one, though, so with some prosperity shards. So, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we can do anything with the intermediate bow at all. So I tried putting the intermediate bow in my offhand uh, since it says it's got a draw speed of plus 35%. And even with that in there, like, I don't eat any faster than if I didn't have it in there. So, anyway... Kind of a waste of time. <laughs> I guess we're not really going to be doing any of the mystical agriculture stuff. And that was a lot of Lord craft as well that <laughs> went into making that. I did end up going into a creative world and checking it out and making sure that the draw speed on the Supremium did not work and it does not. So yeah, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, so back over to our blood altar over here. I now have 65 demonic slates. The yellow hearts do in fact heal a lot more health than the red heart. So if I were to uh, do that and we do a yellow heart, you can see it get a lot more than 10 hearts at a time. So I have to eat like three of those, maybe four to like completely fill up my health. And then if I select the sword, we go an additional 10 more hearts, I think is what it is, into the magenta or pink or whatever color that is. Anyway, um, so we are able to put in about 29 buckets, I think when I right click the sacrificial dagger uh we can increase that by putting runes of self-sacrifice around and by increasing our tranquility thing down here uh below so we're definitely going to want to be looking at that here very soon um but at this point we should have everything together to upgrade this even further to the augmented so we have 28 runes here i'm going to go and grab those and grab those so we have 28 of these runes of capacity We'll throw those into our system here, and then we'll do augmented capacity. Okay, so total we had, I think, 66 buckets in our blood altar. Yeah, you can see right here it says 66 on there. Um, so master blood orb, and that goes here, and we made one. <laughs> okay, let me put the rest of those demonic slates in there. There's 28 of them. Awesome. Okay. So now, if we place the ooh, we place these guys around in the correct location, we should start seeing that go above that 66 mark. And we got 20 of them on this next ring down here, five per side. Can I place that? There it is. And then these last five here. Okay, so now we're at 144 buckets. Yes, so that's pretty good. Now you can see that it's draining out life essence right now. That's going into its internal tank where we can extract if we want to or input fluid into the altar. But yeah, having that much on reserve, that's really good. So we're at 11 buckets. If I right click this, we are at 36. So I guess we put something like 25 buckets in there with, uh, with the dagger. It's good. It's okay, but it definitely can be a lot better. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna want to put some self-sacrifice. I don't even know what this costs yet. So that is a lower tier reinforced slate blank rune. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fourteen, twenty-eight. I, it might be worth doing all twenty-eight of those to the self-sacrifice. I think that's probably what we're going to end up doing. So I'm going to make twenty-eight reinforced slates. I'm pretty sure we have everything else here. Uh, reinforced slate costs a blank slate. So essentially, we're just going to want the Im the imbued these guys and just have that go all the way up to the reinforced slate. So get rid of the demonic and we will add reinforced as our filter, like so. And that should just go really fast. I'm not gonna have to camp this like crazy cause that doesn't use a lot of LP for everything. But yeah, I'll just go ahead and keep filling this thing up all the way and we will be right back guys. All right guys, so we have our 28 runes of self-sacrifice all the way around the altar now. That's what we're looking like as far as the runes go. I am kind of curious to see how much we're going to put in there. We currently have 6.6 .6 buckets. If I right click on this, we now have 92 buckets. So that is a significant increase. That's going to allow us to do things more tick accelerated. We get more bang for our buck essentially by uh, using our rune or I'm sorry, a sacrificial dagger with those runes in there, which is really good. Um, so yeah, that's going to improve our blood magic significantly for all the blood magic stuff that we're going to be doing in the future, which I'm not actually sure what all that we're going to be doing, but I do know that we need to have a tier five altar for some things going forward. So we'll be looking at that. But at this point, we're pretty much, we're pretty much where we need to be. It might even make sense to make all of these uh self-sacrifice as well or maybe half of them self-sacrifice half of them of the augmented capacity so we can put in a lot more and hold a lot more i don't know but anyway we're going to continue on here all right so i was just kind of looking ahead to see what else that we're going to be doing with blood magic later on so if we take a look at these slates we can see that we can craft them into the higher tiers imbued slate demonic slate ethereal slate so the ethereal slate is used and an ultimate crafting table recipe later on to make the chaos catalyst. And generally speaking, we need a bunch of those for different things like this chaos ingot, for instance. And then the chaos ingot is used to make like some crazy stuff down the line, which we're going to need a whole lot of the ethereal slates for anyway. Um, the ethereal slate, if we get back to that recipe, we have not made one of those yet because that does require a tier five altar and we're currently at a tier four. So our next step is to upgrade to a tier five. So we are able to craft these things. Now, like I said before, uh, that would be this next row right here. We have everything set up. We just don't have the runes in place, the blink runes or the sacrifice or the augmented capacity, whatever. Um, it looks like it's going to be a total of 52 runes that we need. So I have made 52. Well, I made enough blink slates to make 52 more runes. So we should be able to do this provided we have enough of the steel in the system, which I'm fairly certain we do. And shift click that. Okay, I just made more than what I wanted, but that is fine. I'm sure, well, I don't know if we're gonna do a tier six, but if we do a tier six, then we now have enough. Huh. Anyway, next step is to get these things all in place. Actually, I'm probably gonna go ahead and upgrade these. So we wanted, what did I say, 52 of these? So like I said, we'll do like half of those, I think, um as self-sacrifice and half of those is augmented capacity or maybe we'll just do all of them as self-sacrifice so we can try and fill up the altar 100 percent every single time uh, another thing i did do is down here i did expand out our tranquility area so previously our tranquil area ended at the stone brick path in a square shape all the way around i did add in the worn stone brick paths and then i expanded things out so we're taking up more of the space around. I added in some crops over here. So we got potatoes, wheat, beetroot, and carrots. So on uh, tilled soil, previously we just had dirt here. So that adds to the tranquility. Uh, I added in fire on top of another rack. And then I put in a uh, sound recording for the fire ambient sound. So we're not hearing constant fire noises around. And yeah, we expanded our grass path over here, our grass patch, I should say. I put some bone meal, so we got tall grass and all this kind of stuff. And with all that combined, we look over here in the upper left-hand corner, you can see we get a plus 200%. Previously, or a plus 200, I guess. Previously, it was at 120. So we have just gained 80 on that. 
I don't know if that's a percent increase or what. We should try right now and just see how much we get with uh, our sacrificial dagger. So we are currently at 42 buckets. If I right click on that, that brings us all the way full. <laughs> okay, so that's really good. That's at least 102 buckets that uh, we can get from this. And it's probably more than that, which is fantastic. So we definitely want to add in more space for more life essence to be added to this. And with that, I might actually just do all augmented capacity. Hmm, we might do that. Yeah, I think that's probably gonna be a good idea. Okay, well anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get that going here. It's gonna take a bit to get all of the stuff done for it. We'll continue on, guys. All right, so I just got done adding in that uh, tier five ring, and I'm looking at the amount of life essence this holds, and to me, that looks like that's saying 20,484 buckets. What? That is so much, 20,000 buckets? So that means when I right click this, that's probably not even gonna move this at all. Like it might move it up one pixel or something. Uh, let's try it. Yeah, you don't even see that thing move. What the heck, 20,000? Uh, right, so that means if we top this thing up, we should be able to like run a whole bunch of stuff and just kind of walk away and not even worry about it for some time. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that might be a little little overboard on the augments here for the capacity. Um, we also have a, a further ring down here. We can do that tier six one and add in more augments. So things like more uh, self-sacrifice or maybe speed increases or whatever. But yeah, that's a lot of runes that we'd have to add in for here. And I think we've uh, pretty much depleted our supply of being able to make runes for today. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I didn't think we'd get up to 20,000 buckets. That just seems a little over the top in my opinion. Uh, so we're at 243 buckets. If I do this, we're up to 360. Well, at least we know about how much our, uh, dagger sacrifice is doing every single time at this point. But as you can see, that's going to take a long time for us to like cap that out to get all the life essence in there to like max it. Oh boy. All right, so one final thing we're going to do with Blood Magic for today. Uh, since we're at a Tier 5 altar, let's go ahead and make the Tier 5 Blood Orb. That's going to use 80 buckets of LP or Life Essence, whatever we're calling it, uh, in order to turn that into the next orb. And there it is, Archmage Blood Orb. Awesome. So now we have all of the different orbs. And we have the master and the weak blood orb over here. So now we have all of the different orbs ready to go, which is fantastic. Yeah, and I think we're pretty much done with uh, with blood magic for today. I'm just going to go ahead and try and <laughs> put a little bit more in there. Yeah, we're never going to fill that up. Not, not the way it's set up right now. That's just too much. Uh, anyway, uh, now that we have that done, I think it's time that we should take a look at some other quests here. I saw there was the Aroma Mining Dimension. Let's go ahead and claim this one. I saw there was the Aroma Mining Dimension that we haven't done yet. And I'm just kind of interested in making this thing, especially since the recipe is a little bit out of the ordinary, I would say. Uh, we are in Kappa mode, so obviously a lot of recipes are like that. But this one just kind of interested me. So we need four large bloodstones. Bloodstone. We have those from before from making our current blood altar. I think you get 20 of those per craft. So we have extras. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, mining tool. Let's go ahead and bookmark this thing so I can find it easier. Did I not? Oh, Applied Energistics is not allowing me to bookmark that. Okay, so we have the large bloodstone. We need five star metal, which is easy. Okay, we also need to get ourselves some glowing gems. We have four of those, apparently. That's the exact amount that we needed. We need two bioluminescence. Bio, okay, we have 23 of those. And what else do we need here? Two resonating gems, and then we need grassoline buckets. Resonating gems, all right, we have those. And then Grassoline, we do not have. So that is something that's unfamiliar to me. So Grassoline comes from the fluid itself, okay? So Grassoline in a fraction eating still, we have to take Bio Crude, 
and turn that into grassoline. And bio crude is made in a magma crucible with rich bio blend, pulped bio blend, rich bio mass. Okay, so we got a few different options here, and each one of these gives different amounts. And bio crude is also made from pulped bio mass. So it's probably going to be easier to get the, the weaker version, I would imagine. Pulped biomass plus sawdust equals pulped bio blend. What about the rich? That comes from, oh, plant oil or seed oil infused onto it. Yeah, let's not worry about that. Okay, so we want the pulped bio blend that comes from pulped biomass, which is in a sawmill. Potatoes, cactus, um, barley, rye, oats. I assume wheat is going to be one of these. Lily pads, carrots, saplings, pumpkins, melons, beets. Okay, sugar cane is one. Yeah, wheat is one as well. All right, well, that seems like quite the adventure to go down to get the uh, grassoline. Um... I don't think we have made a sawmill, have we? We have an energetic infuser, fluid transposer. Yeah, we don't have a sawmill. Okay, so that's something new for us to make. We do have the magma crucible, which we needed to uh, make the bio crude out of the pulped bio blend. So that's easy enough. But yeah, we need to get ourselves a sawmill. So a sawmill is made like that, but we don't have that. <laughs> Aluminum gears, we don't have that on AutoCraft. We do have the machine frame, I know for sure, on AutoCraft, and we can do that, so I'll tell it to make that. A saw blade, so that's a Constantan plus steel plates. We don't have Constantan gears. And you know what, I'm not sure I really want to make a recipe for that, so let's just go ahead and manually have these gears crafted up. So over here to our, is this the gear one? This is the gear one. Okay, so we will do two aluminum gears, one Constantan gear. And what else do we need here? The saw blade requires steel plates. We have those in auto craft. We just need six of them. Cool, so we should have those here momentarily. Very good. So there is the saw blade. And that requires a redstone reception coil. Easy enough. Done. Done. Sawmill. So now we're also going to want to get ourselves uh, the resonant conversion kit, I'm sure, because who wants to use the lowest tier basic sawmill? So pyrothium dust. We don't have a recipe for that. All right. Do we have the stuff to make pyrothium directly? I should probably make a recipe for that, but we will do that another time because reasons. Because I'm lazy. How about we'll go with that? All right, so we have the resonant conversion kit done, and we'll put the saw blade right here, or I guess the saw mill. There's this thing. We want the augment to, like, make this go faster. Easy. Okay. So we have all of that. This is going to need power, and I assume we're using the uh, Ender Energy Conduit, so I'll throw one of those right here. And we're also... Can I... I don't think I can get that. No! I'm going to have to um, grab this guy to get a wrench and do a shift left click on here, and we'll just say that's insert only. So we want the Conduit Binder. Do one of those to make the facade, and then we will put the facade over here in the painting machine so we can cover up that conduit on the other side. There we go. Awesome. So now that we have this, we are going to want to get ourselves an interface. I think the sawmill is also going to come in handy for um, making planks. Currently, we're doing one log to one plank, the normal crafting version. And I think the sawmill allows you to get a lot more out of that, although I'm not entirely sure but i'm pretty sure so there's this Ooh, there's that does this have the recipe show recipe yeah right here so does this show it'd probably be at the back so logs turn into i'm trying to find something that looks like an oak log here is a spruce wood so that turns into two so, I mean, I guess it's better than just doing a one-to-one, -one, but not by a whole lot. I guess it depends on how fast this machine is. 
if we want to go this method or not. Uh, so with lava, interesting. Anyway, um, so we have this thing set up now. So we should be able to do this pulped biomass. Let's go ahead and make a recipe to, oh, actually we need to set this machine so it can accept recipes, right? So we want to push pull from the top, like so. Auto output, yeah, we're good now. All right, so that machine should be ready to accept auto crafting recipes. And then we gotta figure out what it is we are actually gonna auto craft with it. I'm not sure how much wheat or sugar cane or pumpkins or any of this stuff that we have. Carrots I know we have a lot of, so we will do carrots. I know for sure we have a bunch of carrots. Uh, actually, I think we have nature essence, right? Yeah, we have nature essence, so that should be able to craft any of these things that we want to, as long as we have the crafting recipe for it somewhere. So um, we want to go into the sawmill, this thing. Okay, so there's a recipe for that. I need more blink patterns. Let's tell it to make like 10 of them for now. Okay, and then we're also going to need a recipe to uh, turn it into the pulped bio blend. So let's get that going here. We should have plenty of sawdust already. We don't have any sawdust. Okay, uh, sawdust is made how? I thought we had that already in the system. Wait, what was this other stuff? That sawdust, they're both called sawdust. So sawdust is made in the pulverizer with nothing equals four of them, great. Uh, what else do we have here? It looks like a plank equals two. So I think we might do that recipe. So blink patterns. Okay, and then we want this one, pulverizer. We'll do, yeah, we'll do an oak plank equals that, and we'll put that into the pulverizer. Very good, and then this one goes into just a normal crafting. Put it right here. Okay, so pulped bio blend. Let's make like a hundred. Can we do that? Looks good to me. So we'll craft up a hundred of those. I don't really know if we need a hundred, but we got everything and it's crafting and doesn't look like we're having any problems at all. So I am happy with that. Very good. Very good. Okay. So the pulped bio blend again, we want to turn that into the bio crude and that goes to the magma crucible. So we needed how many buckets of that? It was a total of four buckets of grassoline and that 200 turns into 100, so we're gonna need eight buckets of bio crude. And... Okay, so that means that we are gonna need, was a 24 pulped bio blend, I th think? Eight buckets divided by, three, carry the one, I don't know, I'll figure it out. I'll get all these things going here, we'll be right back. All right, cool. So now we have our fractionating still, and we'll put the augments in there. Fully augment that thing, very good. So at this point, we will take our 16 buckets of bio crude, and we will plop that right here, and we will tell this to import from the top, auto input, unavailable. Okay, so we need to click that with a wrench. Uh, all right, so we are now making grassoline. So with 16 buckets, it turns two into one, essentially. Uh, we should end up with eight buckets of grassoline. Actually, we only needed four buckets, didn't we? I think I, I think I overachieved here just by a little bit. Well, I guess if we need to make two of these, we will be good to go. Yeah, we only need four buckets. All right, so bucket, one, two, three, four, and there it is. There's our grassoline. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to end up with four additional buckets. Oops, I guess it's fine though. So now we can take all of these materials over to our astral sorcery area. And I didn't have a recipe for signalum, so I had to make that. Um, so we, oh, that's liquid sunshine. Oh no, I totally misread this recipe. So liquid sunshine is made with the vat with glowstone and sunflowers. Then we need fire water. Oh, you know what? This is easy. We already have fire water, don't we? We have 35 buckets of fire water. We've gotten these from loot. Okay. Uh, yeah, my mistake. Liquid sunshine 
bucket. Let's go and get rid of all of these. Okay, so I guess we made six extra buckets of um, the grassoline that we did not need. So yeah, so fire water, one bucket turns into one bucket of liquid sunshine. So we are going to need two sunflowers, two glowstone, a the vat, and two fire water. Okay, let me go ahead and make a the vat real quick. That is not an expensive recipe. I bet you weren't expecting to see the Lost City's dimension right now. <laughs> so we're trying to make liquid sunshine and we need sunflowers, right? Well, sunflowers, they don't have a real recipe. Like we could get into Batania if we wanted to and do this and convert all the flowers into sunflowers or we can come to the Lost City's dimension and bam, sunflowers right here. Yep. So we can collect all the sunflowers that we want from this dimension. Just gotta find a sunflower plains biome. There seems to be a lot of plains biomes around here, so that's not that difficult. I was kind of looking at this biome. I don't know which one this is. What is this biome? This is a corallium infested swamp. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, we found a sunflower plains biome. It didn't take super long to search around and just see the sunflowers kind of chill in there. But now that we have this, we should be able to go back home and make ourselves some of the liquid sunshine using our the vat. So I made our the vat here. We need to get some of the fire. So there's two buckets of fire water. And I guess we're going to put it over here. This isn't something we're going to automate. There's no real reason to. I guess I'll just put it right here. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Is this going to retain lava? Oh boy, did I make a mistake? Uh, how, is there void output tank? Okay, there we go. Yep, that was a mistake. I wanted just to put it over here next to the power. Okay, so now that we have that, we can put in this guy. This is a premium cooking impossible capacitor. So the premium cooking is what specifies it's good for the vat. At least that's my understanding anyway. So we will put in two sunflowers here. We will put in glowstone blocks like so. And then we just need to click the fire water on there. Okay. And things should be happening. I don't actually know how long this takes. Apparently it takes a little bit of time though. You can see it's slowly converting. So there is one bucket and now it's going to do the second bucket. So there's liquid sunshine. And as soon as this one's done, we should be able to get this recipe completed. Awesome. So there is two buckets of liquid sunshine. So back over to the astral sorcery section. Let's get this thing made. Uh, mining multi-tool. All right. And then we need to get ourselves our astral sorcery wand to boop the table. And done immediately. So mining tool is done. Awesome. So if I remember correctly, you need to... Mm, let's see, stone brick, I think, right? Stone. I think you craft it with the stone bricks to turn it into the special type. Yeah, and we needed, I believe you can do a really tiny portal if you want to. Let's try this. Let's try just doing a really, really tiny one. We'll go downstairs next to our other portal areas and set this thing up. Uh, How about right here? So we'll do one one by two something like that and you can right click in there there it is a super super tiny mining dimension so now you just sneak in the portal and here we go all right so we got some more astral sorcery stuff around looks like we can find the um applied energistics meteors if we really wanted to do any of that kind of stuff uh anything else of note in this dimension that we can see right away looks like this is all just the mining biome dimension i don't actually know if there's anything special as far as like spawn rates of materials here let's go over by our portal oh that's interesting the portal on the other side is a small one too huh i didn't know it'd do that i thought it'd make the the standard default size yeah, let's go all the way down to bedrock. We'll do a quick vein mine, see if we see anything out of the ordinary as far as ores go. All right, so all the way down at the bottom, we're going to do a vein mine real quick and see if we see anything of note. So we see boron. We see pretty much all the ores that we've seen in other dimensions. I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary just yet. 
do a couple more here just see if, if we can find anything else what that's uh platinum ore silicon okay so you can find emerald ore if that's something you need i suppose looks like we can get the crystals here simple crystals and what is this this is the destabilized redstone all right so you can find those here looks like there's lava deposits nickel ore all right so i'm not seeing anything like super special here but it's definitely a place that we can come and farm up a whole bunch of different ores should we need it anyway it was a fun little adventure to make the mining multi-tool anyway that's it for today thank you guys for watching remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time thanks for watching guys bye bye